Few stories capture the imagination quite like Around the World in 80 Days. While many have heard of Nellie Bly's 72-day journey, the tale of Elizabeth Bislin's parallel circumnavigation often whispers like a forgotten echo from the past. Hi everyone, Ken here. Today we are adventuring all the way around the world to explore this house. On November 14, 1889, two women set out from New York City on a quest to outdo Phileas Fogg, the fictional character from Jules Verne's Around the World in 80 Days. While Nellie Bly's eastward journey was highly publicized, Elizabeth Bisland, a literary editor at the Cosmopolitan magazine, was a relatively unknown contender. She had married Charles Whitman Wetmore, a wealthy New York lawyer, and the couple had purchased 60 acres on Center Island on which they would build their dream house, but construction would take years. In the meantime, Elizabeth departed westward on a journey that would test her endurance and challenge the era's notions of what women were capable of and adventure around the world. Elizabeth Bisland was not just any traveler. She was a southern belle turned New York journalist and socialite, known for her sharp wit and elegant prose. Her journey was as much a cultural exploration as it was a race. Through her eyes, we see the world in the late 19th century, a world of steamships and railways, of crowded cities and ancient traditions. Elizabeth traced her path around the world and believed she could set a new record. As she raced westward, she encountered the vast expanse of America, the Pacific's daunting wake, the exotic allure of Japan, and the ancient mystique of China. Her journey was a kaleidoscope of cultures, landscapes, and human connections as she navigated the world. She engaged with the people she met, delving into the heart of the places she visited. Her writings in her memoir, In Seven Stages, A Flying Trip Around the World, provide not just a travelogue, but a deep reflective narrative of the 19th century's world's complexities and beauty. Despite delays and perils of travel in an age before commercial airlines and electronic communication, Elizabeth Bisling completed her journey in 76 days, a mere four days longer than Nellie Bly. Though she did not win the race, her achievement was extraordinary. She arrived back in New York to much acclaim, having demonstrated the capabilities and resilience of women, challenging societal norms and inspiring generations to come. Now that she was home, it was time for her to settle into her new house. The couple's mansion, which they named Applegarth, had been designed in the Tudor Revival style. Not wanting to break from the overall aesthetic, every piece of the property was styled to mimic various elements from the time period. From the lush gardens with their quaint but charming walkways, to the path leading to their boathouse, Applegarth was an Americanized interpretation of some of the best sights seen by Elizabeth while she traveled across Europe. To enter the mansion, we will follow the Pea Gravel Drive towards the arched limestone entryway. Before entering, we can pause to admire the detailing from the carved pointed arches set below lion's heads to the elaborate gingerbread and gracing the gabled slate roof. The interior was designed to be dark, in keeping with traditional Tudor design elements, with whimsical woodwork mimicking Gothic tracery in the stair hall. The resplendent drawing room was clad in wood paneling with exposed wood beams soaring above antique furniture, contrasting with the all-white library visible through the first opening on the right. Though, this room's most captivating feature was perhaps its Indiana limestone fireplace, an exact replica of Queen Elizabeth I. Continuing through the drawing room, views of the water crest beyond the tea room's windows, Elizabeth's favorite room in the house where she could watch the yachts pass by. The dining room, with no overhead chandelier, was meant to be a romantic destination where Elizabeth and her husband could enjoy meals by flickering candlelight. They enjoyed the property for several decades, growing old together on the waterfront. First, Charles passed away in 1919. Curiously enough, Elizabeth and Nellie Bly, her competitor from many years earlier in the race around the world, both contracted pneumonia in the 1920s. Nellie beat her one more time, heading to the grave first, but Elizabeth held on until 1929. Applegarth was eventually torn down in 1940 to make way for new development, but we thankfully still have a handful of photos to remember the mansion by. Elizabeth Bisland's journey might not have garnered the same historical spotlight as Nellie Bly's, but her story is no less inspiring. It's a narrative of curiosity, determination, and the relentless pursuit of knowledge and experience. In a time when women were often relegated to the sidelines, she took center stage in a global adventure, proving that courage and ambition know no bounds. Which room is your favorite? Let me know down below in the comments section, and while you're there, make sure you are subscribed with that bell notification turned on so you never miss an exciting episode of This House.